Hey guys, it's Lex Roche and Courtney Noir, and you are listening to another episode of The Pleasure is All Yours. We are a podcast all about the sexual liberation of the Black and queer communities. We really wanted to create a space for us to talk, laugh, kiki, and really emphasize how the pleasure is. It's all yours. Cold water from a straw. Uh, Nothing like it. So fucking good, okay? Delicious. Lex said, fuck the turtles. (laughs) I want a straw, baby. But Plastic. First of all, I've had this straw for like four years now. Yes. My water bottle is really an emotional support item at this point. Oh, absolutely. If I don't have it, I'm literally like... Losing my mind. And then I forget what water is because... It's hard to receive it when yeah. you don't have your, your trusty receptacle. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to the canteens. <laughs> to the canteens. Is that what it's called? Receptacle? I don't like that word. Well, a receptacle is anything that holds something. So that's why, like, ah. sometimes when, when men want to be crass to women, they will say you're nothing but a human receptacle I've or sperm. I've never heard that before. Fluids. Hmm? I've never heard somebody say that before. Oh, okay. Well, I've watched a lot of white uh, early 2000s movies okay, in my day. Okay, that sounds like something a white man would say. So I think that's where I got that from. But also, you know, like a trash receptacle. Okay, yeah. You know? Okay. That you- I just thought that was because it, it pertained to that thing, oh, you okay. know? Well, you know, it, I guess, maybe. I don't know. Words mean things, and sometimes I don't know what those words and things we are. We also can create our own meanings within our own context, you know? Hey, whoa. I'll start a language, too. Calm down. Oh, wow. Okay, let's pause. <laughs> are you getting your rocks off, Mr. Corvette? Mr. Big Truck? It's probably a Chevy with a, a Chevy, like, cobalt you if you feel good <laughs> with a um blue lives matter flag and on the two bumper. different car door colors and because you're still working on it boo and possibly those little hanging balls that are on i the back. fucking hate seeing those literally they're the worst especially if it's like a big truck mm-hmm. and then they have these fake fucking ball sacks yeah, hanging it's really oh annoying. my god i actually saw one that was flesh toned and i wanted to kill myself literally Man, disgusting and they had veins they had the vas de friends <laughs> that's a callback from last week you guys <laughs> <laughs> i love a good callback bitch <laughs> hey lex for shay what's up courtney noir another week in the studio yeah here we are yeah we like to lie to you guys sometimes and like <laughs> make it seem like we're recording on two separate weeks but we didn't bring a change of clothes yeah so well we're here Technically, I brought my bra, but I can't do the podcast episode Man, in my bra. fuck YouTube. Because <laughs> you could. I could. They just won't let you. Yeah. I hate that. Wow, it's because I'm black. It, everything is because of that. <laughs> I promise you. Everything. Um, so, we usually like to start off every episode with a pleasure moment. And that is really just a super good feeling, best part of your week. It can be as small as buying a cup of coffee or as big as skydiving. Lex, what's your pleasure moment? Um, I'm going to say, like, you know, I was kind of splurging on myself a couple weeks ago, maybe like a week or so ago, whatever. And I broke down and got new airpods okay, because that, yeah. my headphones i broke them and we so know like sad. headphones are a necessity i have to have them i actually can't function without them so i had i just thought it was it would be a good idea to also get ones that are compatible with my phone mm-hmm. and that fit in my ear because i love my over the head headphones but it's also not practical and sometimes yeah, for sure. like i like to go to the grocery store and have yeah. my headphones in but i also kind of want to be aware of my surroundings right. and i can't really do that with my headphones on so i think like just splurging but splurging on my, and i got an apple watch lovely so just splurging on myself was really nice as you Um, must do sometimes you know i think it's a i'm not saying like retail therapy should be used all the time i haven't bought myself something new in a really long time so like a few times a year like really going in on yourself it just can brighten your mood especially when it's things you actually really need yeah and then you're like wow this upgrade feels so good Yeah, yeah so the headphones have been working really well and then the apple watch i just like the rings i like the 
I like the sleep tracking thing too, yeah. where it like even tells you what f- what phase of sleep. I don't get that much deep sleep, bitch. Yeah. Like an hour to like an hour and fifteen minutes, and I sleep on average for like six hours and fifteen minutes. That's not enough sleep. Are you still taking your meds regularly? Um, I need to. So, one thing I hate about my psych is that. Like, and I think I'm just going to start getting it through my primary care physician because like every six weeks I have to like talk to her, Mm -hmm. my psych, and that's a $70 visit every time. And then I also have to get my meds, which isn't like that much for the meds, but like I can't get my meds without seeing the psych. And like, at least if I had a primary care, I could just call her and be like, Hey, I'm running low. Can you call me in one? But like, she wants to do a mental health check every time and I'm like I'm doing fine like me having it is fine and like they have a text line where you can text to like talk to the doctor and stuff but I text and I ask for an appointment and she's like oh please call but they have the same hours as my office and sometimes I just get so wrapped up in work I don't leave my desk so it is like in it's kind of like inconvenient and like every time I reset my password to their online portal and I go to log in, it tells me my password is wrong. And even when I told them that, she's like, well, just call us. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm texting oh you gosh. because I can't call yeah. you because we work the same yeah. fucking hours. And also, if you're just trying to schedule an appointment, they should definitely just be able to do that. Why can't you just, why can't Literally. you just do that? I don't understand. Healthcare is like really frustrating. So <laughs> your pleasure moment was <laughs> splurging. I love that. Yeah. Um, I would say this week, I had trouble last week giving my pleasure moment too. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> I think right now it's just being at home and I'll be at home for a while. So I'm so happy about that. Um, yeah. We haven't, I haven't really even been traveling for that long this season. It's just, they were so back to back that I'm so glad I'm here. That's, I feel like that's where I'm a little under the weather. Like mm-hmm. the, the allergies of like going all these different places with different climates is like, really starting to get to me yeah so yeah i'm just enjoying my home again and enjoying spooky season the beginning of spooky season yes oh my god bro i cannot wait for dragula to come out yeah i'm really excited is it uh, does it come out on halloween or like october, october 1st it's october, oh, october 1st. 1st yeah oh exciting. i was like oh they're early this year yeah, last time i feel like it was a little oh later. my god i fucking love them yeah i can't i really can't wait i something has been missing a few things have been missing and, and Dragula, Dragula is definitely one of them like one of the love. shows that I'm excited to listen we love the Brule brothers um, bitch put in yeah. all the queens and kings that have reigned thus far love them I saw they're bringing majesty back no comment no fucking comment but we love the boulets if you watch dragula join our discord so we can talk Please. we can do like little live chats with dragula. oh my god maybe i'll start re-watching oh oh i because yo season two is the best one okay which one is that one bitch, is that with louisiana bitch Pitches? pudding and abora oh abora okay um okay. yeah yeah also no comment <laughs> <laughs> but louisiana purchase i love her. i love louisiana purchase um i think she's season three okay because that's land insider season <sighs> land insider <laughs> yes mm. many comments and they're Man. all perfect positive as hell love them down um so mm-hmm. speaking of spooky season tell me I saw a meme that inspired my whole episode. Okay. <laughs> I love when that happens. Yeah. It's Fem Top Fall. Ooh. <sighs> it's Fem Top Fall, baby. Okay. It's my time. Yeah, it's Lex's time to f- shine and defrost and get to work. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've been you've been at work all year long, but <laughs> it's your time to shine now. And, you know, as we continue this journey, I've talked a lot about my transition mm-hmm. from sexy little bratty sub mm-hmm. to bitchy switch. Mm-hmm. And now she's she's a I don't, she's switching she's switching all right okay yeah. that, that knob is turning fast <laughs> and i actually don't even know how to turn it off i don't i would love to have um somebody like sub me out again but also i'm okay yeah like i, I tried to let that happen this weekend because mm-hmm. now you know <laughs> now you know yeah so it's like who even are you but it, when you like it's you sometimes it's just a it's like you meet someone and it's like oh yeah oh yeah totally yeah i think i need i need to be around a certain energy which yeah. i will definitely talk about but 
I wanted to update you. Yes. I've been waiting for this so, update. You know. Oh, pause. Side note. Okay. Before we get started in the meat and potatoes, okay. Um, I did go out on a date. Mm-hmm. With a girl. Ooh. And see this. And fem. Oh, and okay. Fem top fall. I asked her out. Okay, I, I love that. I love that. And it was great. It was it was cool. I hit her up on Instagram because uh-huh. I am a f- like I wasn't a fan. Okay, I'm not a fan, but like I've been following her on Instagram for a while, and I'm like, ugh, she's so cute, and she's a musician. So you know, I need to know. I, I'll show you afterwards. Okay. And um, yeah, so I asked her out, and I was like, "Are you, you know? Are you a little gay? Because it's very you can't tell." Yeah. About it. She's like, "I'm a lot of gay." So I said, "Hey, like, let's go out." So we went out, and we had some drinks, mm-hmm. and we just chatted, and it was like really great, and it didn't feel like um, like friendly. Yeah. You know what I mean? It felt gay. Yeah, it felt gay, which I appreciate a lot. Yeah. Because I think that was what my concern was as being somebody that doesn't really approach films very much at all yeah um i was just like this why because i feel like i naturally i fall into a friend vibe because that's what i'm used to like when i'm around women especially pretty women even though i'm attracted to you i just try to relate my yeah. my my in instinct is to relate so we just got to know each other and it was cool i hope we do it again for sure it was great i love that but what did you guys go do we just had like wine oh, i've okay. been taking pretty much everybody to the same place the waiter was like hey girl (laughs) good to see you again (laughs) (laughs) bitch shut the fuck up but i did have a question okay so obviously obviously i asked her out and Uh i she's younger as well okay i didn't know how young she was until we are the plans were already in motion okay but she's not that it's not bad it's like (laughs) she's like two years older than red okay but for me, that's young. Yeah. So. Red is young. For <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, not only was I like, worried about not being able to like relate to her on a, an age level, mm-hmm. but like I asked her out. So I felt like I need to pay. It was not cheap. Okay. It was not cheap, which is also cool. I budgeted for it and I felt good when I was done. I was like, yeah, you done, nigga. <laughs> 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 Niggas over here talking about 50, 50 and you just put your card yeah, down. I, bitch. I, slept, I said, no, baby, I got it. You want another one? You want another glass? I said, so are you getting another glass? Absolutely. Get the most expensive one. <laughs> I got you. Inside. I was like, <laughs> So, B- skipping bad, nails this month? Yo, bad bitches will be the death to you, I'm telling you. And so... Because that, you want like, to do it. I want to do it. It's like, it's like I, consequences be damn, bitch. This is my last $20. You can have it. You take can have it. I, I'll go get an. I'll find another. I don't... You could actually take it and just burn it in front of me. And I'll, I'll be, be okay like, too. you know what? If that's what you felt like doing. Truly. And like, I, I want to ask her again. I also just know, like, I don't want to feel... I don't know. Like, okay, as a femme and as a top, uh-huh. as a dominant person, less about being a top, but yeah. just a dominant person, uh-huh. how does that work for you? Like, you know, the whole, like, who pays for what? Is it usually just who asks you out? Do you usually just try to pay because that's something you enjoy doing? Do you let somebody, like, what are your expectations around that when you're so, dating women? So it kind of depends because, like, if I'm, like, if I'm like really into you, I'm not even letting you pick your wallet up. Like okay. I'm like, it's fine, don't worry about it. Like it's fine, don't worry about it. But like, if I'm still trying to like feel it out, whoever asks who is yeah. who pays. Right. So if you invited me out, I'm assuming you're paying. Okay. So then when we get there, and then it's like, oh, you know we're not i'm not paying now we're splitting it like fine i'll come prepare i usually come prepared to split it you anyway. never go somewhere when you don't have the funds to cover exactly it. Yeah. but like that is definitely like the main that's the easiest rule to go based off of and i think like i'm more inclined to pay like if we also have gone out a few times yeah so you know and i also have the funds obviously but yeah. like um yeah other than that if you ask me i'm expecting you to pay if i'm asking you i'm expecting to pay okay that's yeah. pretty much my rule of thumb too yeah sometimes i just think like okay if i'm with a pretty girl and especially because she's younger than me i just feel like weird like 
like it's instinctually i would yeah. feel like i would have to pay no you don't get rid of the heteronormative norm of it like no, no that's not for sure and is. actually yeah. you know when i was on my way here and i was thinking about that i was like that is like yeah. you keep looking at things from like a who's the boy and who's the girl but like nobody's the boy nobody's the girl because like, you're th- because you're thinking like oh since i was the more like dominant one in the approach then i have to be the one i have to play daddy or but something but you but you don't like uh, yeah and that's the good thing about and i was gonna say like when you're like oh she's a femme and like it was very much giving gay like i think what happens is that like you meet femmes but they're not gay 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 like how you're trying to gay and so you're at different levels of gay trying to gay at the same mm. level or mm. expecting them to gay at the same at level as level. you mm-hmm. and they're not so then you're like um this is like do you like girls or do like what's up like what's going on but i just think bitches be different levels of gay that's facts that's facts yeah 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 absolutely um thanks you're welcome from the resident lesbian femme um so as you know i have been talking also a lot about my little friend out of the country mm-hmm. that i likes to dominate uh, virtually Got and in different area codes and don't i guess two i guess three maybe four yeah okay maybe we should say zip codes yeah yeah would codes. that be would that no i understood what area codes mean no I no i know oh, okay. i know but i'm just saying like would you feel like you had more hoes if i said zip codes <laughs> <laughs> instead of that. area codes <laughs> like is that what it is <laughs> okay listen um i yeah hoes in different zip codes i bitch. love that yeah hoes in different zip codes yeah anyway um so i was up there a few weeks ago mm-hmm. and i really got to do everything that I've been like preparing myself for since we met which was like Uh so fun so I thought I would like kind of break down the eve to you the evening (laughs) this is an episode all about your doming evening yes because I also (laughs) wanted like I want people to use it be able to use it as a template Uh because I had a template so like Uh I'm gonna just go down my little template I thought you were just doing it for me but oh I mean I am I'm doing it for you and the girls okay (laughs) everything I do is for you (laughs) and the girls okay Okay. gotcha (laughs) (laughs) So, I actually spent some time, so like we've seen, we've met three times now, which doesn't seem like a lot when you put it, but we, we talk quite a bit. So like it didn't feel like I was just coming to visit him and then I was like in a hotel room beating him the fuck up. Like we yeah. had, we've talked about this for literally probably like eight months. Mm-hmm. And um, I read a book this summer called The the good girl's guide to domination Mm -hmm. and it was a book all about femdoms in particular and like how to create your character how to um how to make sure that your sub stays in line it gave you literally like a blueprint of what a scene should look like and how to plan your scene beforehand which was probably my favorite part of the book because I I would just sit on the plane and I just had all these notes and I would like input my little sidebars and like I had this little bible of what my sub liked and didn't like and Mm -hmm. then I would like use those to like put them in my templates like I just felt really confident going into the night like oh I know exactly what the fuck I'm gonna do when I get there yeah that was great I love Um, the organization of it all oh it's sexy like honestly that was a that was a really hot part yeah um so hold on let me pull up my little template here (laughs) now you have to make the google doc shareable so people can go use your template so the template is on I have it it's called a BDSM bible but it's my subs so it has all of his information in it just take it oh it is like the whole thing is uh, is like it's really okay. for him like it even has like his instructions on it and okay stuff. I got and then, you. Like, yeah i got you yeah um but maybe maybe i could just like take yeah and put it in a different document put, like little brackets you yeah know? yeah okay yeah. i got you all right anyway so stages of a scene so you're somebody that wants to dominate your partner or you met this little sub online and you're like, fuck it, I'm, I'm about to rock your world, but you don't know where to start. First, you want to have a conversation with them. So like you want to ask them like what their expectations are of the scene, uh, what their expectations of you are as like a dominant. So like that will kind of tell you what kind of what, what kind of character some? you want to like present yourself as. So in my instance, my sub is very like he wants to be told what to do how to do it he wants like a um like a 
like a mistress or like a teacher Mm -hmm. so like somebody that's gonna punish him when he doesn't do the things that you ask him to do but you like are you you have expectations for him and you're asking him some people might want a goddess which is more like i'm praising you no matter what i everything everything you do is is you're my god so like i'm kissing your toes i'm kissing your feet i'm sending you praises every morning i'm sending you money i'm i'm giving you tributes i'm like manifesting things for you those are like the goddess and then there was the amazon which i thought was interesting this is another Mm -hmm. character that she could be Mm -hmm. the amazon is like this tall large and like energy woman that captures like a sub so like the sub is captured and like you torture and everything you do is at your will okay so like i'm torturing you to get information out of you i'm torturing you because i like to see you squirm and i want to see you hurting and crying like yeah you're my little um you're my little plaything in the jungle that's what i like to think okay. of as like the amazon and her prisoner and there was another one sissy maid so that one oh yeah yeah that one is like um boys that like errands or like um like wearing diapers mm-hmm. um like being treated like a baby um the maid outfits yeah like, like being a ser- being of service as yeah well. like full service and that's like if i need a table i can use you as my table yeah if i need a foot rest i can use you as my foot rest you're exactly. usually wearing something cute while you do it too yes so like find out what their expectations are so for mine he wanted me to like keep him on schedule for things he wants um he wants to like follow instructions so i gave him a lot of instructions one of the things he does is sends me a text every day at 11 11 a.m and 11 11 Mm p.m and he like tells me all of these like glorious things about how he feels about me Mm -hmm. and why he's wants to be my little boy like he's my i call him my little boy but we don't have like an age it's not an age play but he just likes to be called a little boy and i don't mind calling him like my little my little boy yeah so um once I figured out what he likes, I made those instructions for him, sent it to him like a few weeks in advance so that he had time. Like really it was like two months in advance. So he had time to like do these things for me and we would keep track. So like we Work had a Google doc. Punishments exactly. Too. That, that's really the only reason. So yeah. like we had a Google doc and every day he didn't text me at 11, 11 or every day he didn't send me a picture of his tee shot at four o'clock on Monday. Every week he does that even now. Um, Every time he forgets to call me ma'am after he like asks me something or starts his day off, like I would look, park, make a little tick mark next to that. And then like I had a little little journal to go by when I got there and he saw it. He knew exactly what punishments he was going to get before I got there. So he had this because like, he knew what he didn't do. And he trust me, like I have messages in here that's like literally I'm begging him. I'm like you must be doing this shit on purpose you must want to get a rise out of me you must want me to beat that ass and i know he did and i know so that don't let these subs get over on you because punishment is something they also want yeah so you have to like it's like a reward yeah like it's that's the that's the teetering part because it's like because you get that feeling where like you you're telling him to do something blatantly not doing it and it's like my literally um, uh, like my, the way my tick in your neck my neck i was just like what uh, um i just said to do something and you no, won't so, do it so i think i don't know if we brought this up on the podcast but, Ooh, I'm about, but I'm my about to blood just up. started boiling no, 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 <laughs> hold on hold on hold on I, I i don't know if we talked about this on the podcast maybe we did but i'm gonna tell the story again really quick so one night i was doing something and i was messaging you mm-hmm. and i forgot what we were talking about but you were like just call i was like i, I want to call him on some something oh yeah and i was like what it was like yeah you were like you made a joke oh i dropped my ring you made a joke and you were like um something about oh i calling think him and yeah him calling you and showing you is yeah i just yeah i was like should i just call him and like make him show me his something or like maybe yeah. i'll call him naked or whatever and I was like, was yeah, like yeah do it yeah do it so i called him and i know he was at work i knew he was at work so, um, so right that's the best so, time exactly. to do it so um he Show didn't answer he didn't answer so lex was like okay 30 lashings or something like that right did you tell me what but I, I said i said something about getting spanked for sure yeah like lex was like 
okay, he deserves like 30 lashes or something. So I texted him and I was like, okay, well, uh, my Lex said, because he, he like knows something, who Lex is. I said something about a spanking. Though, yeah. Sure. I was like, well, Lex says you're going to have to get this many spankings because you didn't answer the phone. And like, he was like, oh my God, like <laughs> now I'm nervous. That was a, that's a lot. Like, I can't believe that I was at work. Like he sent this whole message. He was like, I promise you, I was just at work. I really couldn't answer because my boss was da, da, da. And I was just looking at him like, I really don't give a damn. Like, I, don't I don't give, give a, a fuck. fuck. <laughs> I don't understand. And because Lex <laughs> said this, how many lashes you get? That's how many I put on your damn punishment. Chart, nigga. <laughs> so you better get used to the idea. Yeah. I love that. And I know he loved that. He loves powerful women. So like that was equally as hot for him as it was scary for him to know that somebody <laughs> else gave him this punishment. Right. But get this a few weeks later. You texted me when this happened. <laughs> Go ahead. A, tell a the few story. weeks later, he was like. <laughs> He was like, see, I, we were talking about something and he was like, well, what do you think Lex would want me to do? Like, how? My, what do you think Lex's punishment would be? Or should you talk to Lex about what punishment I should receive? The way my neck <laughs> twisted like 180 to like uh, the side, like the horizon, bitch. I almost threw my phone across the room. I was so pissed. I was like, are you shitting me? <laughs> Who's your dom? Is Lex the fucking dom or am I the fucking dom? So I wrote that down on his punishment list in big black letters and I'll tell you how I punished him with that. And that was great. That is so perfect. But I was like, don't get it fucking twisted. Like, she does not own you and she don't own me. Yeah. I, I, sometimes I give her the liberty, <laughs> but she don't own shit mm -hmm. when it comes to this too. So you better get that shit correct. And he never did it again and I appreciate that. Um, but I wrote that down on the punishment <laughs> List. anyway so once you figure out like some of the things he likes some of the things he dislikes for instance um i don't know if he likes me putting out his business in the street but y'all don't know who he is so it's okay he really enjoys words of affirmation so like he loves when i call him like a little sweet boy or you're such a good boy you're you're my sweet boy you know you're my favorite toy uh you made me so happy today i love that you please me like those things he likes head pats and scratches and cuddles and like little soft strokes and then he loves certain sexual things as well that I put down on this list. He dislikes like a lot of degrading, but he also likes it. So it's just like, it's like you got to find a balance. You gotta find anyway, so act one is really just setting up the scene. So you have to establish your authority with your sub. And like I said, I created rules and I made sure that he knew those punishments. Um, I also gave him a list of the items that I was bringing with me. Like we went over them together before I even went. I showed him everything so that he could like say, oh, this is something I would want or this is something I don't want. Mm -hmm. Then I assign names to those instruments mm -hmm. and I told him to study them and then when I got there when I ask for something he needs to bring me the right toy and if he doesn't that's another punishment yeah so you really want to show your sub that like you're the one in charge um, you could do this through like your costuming your lighting your voice just like your environment mm -hmm. honestly I brought like a whole little thing to wear but when the night came it just didn't feel good so I just threw on this like black bodysuit and I felt sexy it worked for me you know it's really the vibe you bring it's really it. the vibe that yeah the vibe yeah. that you bring and like if you assert your authority in other ways like especially your voice and like your expectations of your sub mm -hmm. they'll already be in that mindset like just being around you yeah. you know um i also took some suggestions from him so like i asked him for requests of like scenes that he would want me to do like punishments that he would like and yeah. i don't always do them the exact way um, so you want to establish and reiterate the safe word, let him know, um, that you're like uninterested in hearing no or stop anything that's not the safe word. I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. Yeah. Like the safe word is the only thing that's going to tell me that you really want me to stop. Mm -hmm. Any other word is just kind of testing you. Totally. <laughs> and I think one of the things that I had to remember was like, I had to focus on doing what I genuinely wanted to do. So, like, I was worried that once you get into the scene, you're like, okay, what do I do next? Like, what mm -hmm. instrument am I going to pick up? I just really, you have to, like, really feel that shit out and be like, I want to see him, like, red on the cheeks right now. So yeah. now I'm going to pull out my acrylic one. Like, I want to see him fall in front. So I'm going to flog him until he, like, falls on the ground. Whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but remembering what you want to do is a great way to get started and then you want to hustle him into like the humiliation part so like I had my list of punishments out on a little notebook paper so we both could see it and I just literally went down the list so like for the first one was the 11 11s I think he missed like four times so I gave him 
11 slots times the amount of days that he missed. So he missed four days. So I gave him 44 Mm -hmm. like flogs yeah that and i made him count that was awesome and these things like take a while you want to give them time to breathe Mm -hmm. you want to talk to them like the thing i couldn't like i couldn't believe myself Lex. the things i was saying to this man like (sighs) it was so you're gonna have to let me know that later it was very therapeutic for me and i was very surprised at how horny i got like dealing out these punishments to him yeah you know it's kind of you kind of get drunk on it too genuine because you really step out of like everyone always talks about subspace but nobody ever talks about dumb space enough and like when you get there like bitch i am i am actually like the center of the actual universe right now and you know how i know because of what's going on right here yes and like that's honestly why i think i can't remember a lot of the things i said because you were like like, gone i was just yeah in that bitch okay Mm -hmm. um Act three, act two is the punishment. You dealing out your punishments, telling them why you're punishing them before you start each punishment. So like this, I'm hitting you with this paddle because you didn't do this. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, flogging you because you didn't do this. You have to watch me orgasm without touching me because you didn't do this. Like make sure they know. And then at the end of each punishment, he said sorry and let me know how he could like fix these things so that they don't happen again they've already happened again so i'm tearing his ass up <laughs> tearing it the fuck up okay then act three is like the co- the consolations prizes and rewards so like after he has properly redeemed himself through punishment like i've i'm he's takes off everything on my list at that point You've redeemed yourself to, to me. I, that's the kind of teacher, that's the kind of like mistress that I am. Yeah. I don't want to punish you. You just make me punish you when you don't do the things that I ask you to do. Mm-hmm. But now that you understand and now that you you see what can happen when you don't, hey, I'm here and I'm I want to I want to see you have pleasure and like I yeah. want you to be on me. So like he just kneeled in front of me like while I was sitting in a chair just like this and he just like laid down on me and like I gave him his little head pats and I told him aftercare, he was a good boy. Yeah. That. Not really aftercare. But like but that like, in between that yeah, like, like you're a person, we're good. Not like you're a person, we're good, but more like okay you did good like yes yeah yeah so from there after he got like a little bit of head scratch and a little bit padding then i definitely told him to lay down and i got on his face and allowed myself to orgasm quite a few times perfect did not get up like he was still bound still in his little handcuffs like that's why I'm saying it's not really aftercare because I still had him in a vulnerable position. Yeah, Yeah. to take him back down. Because I think I've learned that like, you need levels yeah. like even within the punishments it's like go go hard and then go soft and let him come back down mm-hmm. so that when you go up again it's just as intense as it was the mm-hmm. first time because when you're like a roller coaster exactly like who wants to go on a roller coaster that's like <laughs> you go to the very top and then you just go in a straight line and then you come down it's not mm-hmm. fun it's not fun i like the twists and turns yeah so i squirt on his face a bunch of times and then from there I had him wash all my toys. Perfect. And then come lay in the bed. That's like one of my favorite things to give a sub to do is to clean up. Yes. Clean up your area. Clean up your mess. That's like one of my favorite things. Pack up your toys. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then I gave him a nice little hug and we cuddled and he got his rocks off by himself while I cleaned up in the shower. Um, Perfect. Yeah, it was great. That was like my first little experience of a full-fledged scene Mm -hmm. it was great one of the punishments i sent you a a picture of oh yes i did enjoy that so this one was that that punishment was for uh him thinking for some reason that you ran shit (laughs) so i wore a strap (laughs) y'all the way she said that was funny (laughs) you don't run shit so like i had to tell him and you that's why i sent you the picture i said you don't run shit (laughs) whoever said i did you both you hoes i was mad at both of y'all why it's not your fault okay it's not but the fact that the fact that he could even think that i was like oh courtney i think it's i think i think it's because like you presented the punishment uh, one of the punishments is oh this is this is from lex bitch i did and i think because like you said right after he loves powerful women it would make sense that he's like oh there's two 
and a, and this bitch also like I get, I get where he's coming for from, sure. but I a hundred and ten percent get where you. I get where from. all three of y'all are coming from. <laughs> I really, I, all two of you, all three of us. <laughs> <laughs> I understand everything, but it did not change my visceral no, reaction. No, I shit. felt that. So I made him um stro- like put on the strap for me. Like he buckled me in mm-hmm. and everything, made everything situated, and then I made him suck my clear acrylic what do you call it plastic dick ding dong until I felt like he understood that he belonged to me mm-hmm. and nobody else that's perfect it was so cool I get why niggas act different when with they the have, penis when, when they have a big yeah. penis because like I was really walking around that hotel room like Everybody get on their knees. Pillows <laughs> on their knees. Get it. I don't want to hear she nothing. She's ready to shoot the, sh- the club up. I was just in the mirror, like, holding it like a real nigga. I actually, really, I just, I hate to say I understand niggas. Having it, yeah. But just like, now just wait till you fuck with the dick. I'm that, scared of that, bro. But he, that is, that is, that is real, true, like, like I feel feral in those moments I'm like oh my god that's something that I want but I'm and that's something that they want as well but I'm scared that one I'm not gonna have the stamina Mm -hmm. and two I wanna have a good stroke but how do I know you know no Lex how did how did you know like when were you fucked by somebody else with a strap first before you ever put on your first strap like how did you know you were good at slinging that dick um I practiced (laughs) I didn't like no one ever like did it to me but I definitely like had a partner to practice with and that was like something that was um like good to figure out like good positions because like it's not like a regular dick so it's kind of it's like stiffer like it's hard to like kind of move with the body so like just having someone that's being like oh can you kind of move over here you know just having someone that can communicate with you and is usually like that is what really helped me and then after that because that was really just one person but after that and I was hooking up with various women and I would sling dick yeah they're just like this is amazing this is good dick slinging they're like bro this is good I'm like okay yeah I know I just have to practice but the practice is also a little nerve wracking for mm-hmm. me but I'm gonna get it I'm gonna do it because I 100% has, believe in you yeah it's all part of the journey like I don't have mm-hmm. to have all of my dominant experiences within the first year like I can take it it's slow. just once you start getting into it it's really hard to like clearly bitch it's like, really hard to slow yourself down because it's like oh I I can do that shit. Okay, let's let's do it some more. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um like one of the cis male partners that I have, he's like okay with me being dominant towards him. Mm-hmm. But like I don't have the same like desire to be and the fact that it's harder now be I don't have the desire to top like top him like I don't have the desire to be dominant around him mm-hmm. but also I don't have the desire to be submissive around him anymore yeah. so like I feel like I'm in a weird place where I don't know what the dynamic is right now not mm-hmm. that there I guess there doesn't have to be like we can people can just have sex on an equal playing field yeah but it's not as fun sometimes yeah like I just I don't know maybe I've been just too kinky lately like realistically no no not in a like i was like not saying you can't be too kinky but i'm I'm just in this context like i think i've been so kinky lately that regular sex is like kind of boring me yeah maybe i need a storyline behind everything now maybe i i I, yeah i you know i think i've thought about taking to the taking to the apps boo to find a sub like a fem sub oh yeah because i i yeah, Fat Life is not doing it for me, girl. A bunch of old white men that don't want to pay a black woman to dominate. And them. not even just not even just that. It's also like white women as well. Like, and I get it. If I also saw my Fat Life profile, I too would be like, oh my god, yes, absolutely. But I think I'm also looking for something like more long term in that way because there are also a lot of things that I want to try as a dom like I have a whole very long list of things that I want to try so yeah I want someone that I can be like compatible with in that way but I think my main thing is is that I'm not really wanting any romantic anything out of that and a lot of people that I meet online that's not their same like that's not the kind of kink that they're 
into and I'm like I don't want to have an emotional connection with you I care about you and your well-being yeah. and everything like obviously you are a human being but like I don't give a fuck I don't give a fuck how your grandma is. I don't care. I don't care if your parent rent or not. I don't give a fuck about none yeah. of that. I don't. That's not what I want. I don't want. I want it to strictly be like a dynamic where it's literally like these are my th these are the things. Yeah, I'm doing these things. If I'm not like literally, that's Very it. Tra that's like, all not I want. Transactional, but like transactional in the sense of like, yeah, I, this is exactly what I want. And you're gonna you you want something from me. I want something from you. Yes. And that's like where yes. this ends mm -hmm. yeah but it's like if i was going in the grocery store and i saw you in public i'd be like oh hi yeah you know like yeah it, it before the scene how was your day yeah. absolutely but like anything deeper than that i don't i don't want to deal with anything that is to do necessarily with your personal life at least in the beginning it could like it, it is, could develop into that but that's not what i'm going into it like looking for it is a lot like is a, a whole other layer to deal with especially mm -hmm. um i think now that it's just we spend whenever i'm there we do spend time together so like mm -hmm. i was there um this summer for like five days and like we probably spent three of those days like together doing mm -hmm. things and like getting to really know each other outside of like just like the bdsm space uh -huh. and i think like we have it we have a, an understood connection of like this isn't a like a romantic emotional thing yeah but i do think we have like an emotional connection and i i think it's necessary for me because like he has a lot of things going on that don't always put him in the mindset i have to like i have to understand his mindset yeah and he has to really understand my mindset because like when you're especially when you're virtual like you we're just doing most of this over the phone we have we'll probably see each other three times this year four times this year mm -hmm. you kind of have to be aware because like i'm not always in the mindset space to be like hello sweet boy do this for me today and da 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 da, da and I'm gonna send you a reward like sometimes I'm just not there I have so much shit going on and he yeah. has a lot of shit going on too so it's kind of nice that like sometimes we can like have an underlayer of like he still sends me his 11 11s but he also says like and today like mistress I have a lot that I'm dealing with and I'm also manifesting these things for myself and I need like some extra energy or some extra love today and I can do that for him mm -hmm. but sometimes it does feel like a lot like yeah. it's a lot to deal with I'm glad that it's there, but I can understand how you might want something that's a little bit more like, yeah, simple and like clean. And I think just because I've tried, like, and maybe it's the, maybe it's just not a good mesh, but the two times that I've tried to also be like involved, like in like a friend capacity with someone that I also was subbing for, it just doesn't always mesh well. When are you a sub? Huh? When were you a sub? No, not me sub. Someone else sub. Oh, okay. like it just doesn't ma it just doesn't mesh well sometimes because yeah. then we get kind of too involved and I feel like that's when like lines get blurred too. So I don't know and I think it's lines blurred for them but lines blurred for me as well because mm -hmm. like outside of my like dom i'm like such a sweet little flower yeah. and i and i want to service others yeah so i think that can also like it just doesn't always mesh well so that's why i'm like i want someone where i can like you know how are you my day was good like like can are, will you be is this day this day good okay yeah. cool let's kind of lead up to that but like as far as <sighs> too deep of a like how they do it in the group in the facebook group mm. that is too close oh, that's I too see. close yeah. for me that's th those are like really those are relationships yes i do think i have a relationship with this person yeah. so yeah I, I understand what you mean i think i just i'm i'm not with the uh, it's too much emotions yeah and i think i don't have the capacity for too many emotions other than my own there's yeah. already so many i am glad that he's not present like as present because like yeah i think it would be like it would just be too much for me sometimes it, it kind of makes it I'm, hard to get into the the mind space once it gets yeah. to a certain point oh yeah i can imagine yeah. yeah um anyway i do have some questions for the girls okay real quick before we get out of here yeah um what tips would you give a switch that wants to enjoy a femme top fall like how do they how do they put their little pinky toes in the you know and this is this is from lexus perspective just in case anybody wants to you know michael jordan that shit um it's really like approaching like not like a worship but like a oh my god like you're just so amazing like i would i would love to take you to this this and this 
and it would just make me feel so good to do that like yeah. I don't know like kind of you know people don't want to be like munchy but that yeah. is what I would describe it as like be thirsty okay hell yeah it worked for me <laughs> yeah be be a little thirsty I think that's what it is I, and you know what maybe that's what girls are missing when they're talking to other girls you gotta be a little thirsty yeah don't be afraid to to not play it cool yeah and like yeah and depending on how you ask for me at least depending on how you ask I'll still get the ticket what do you mean depending on how you ask me out I still might oh, get the ticket oh, okay. depends on depends on your angle okay Hot. So take risks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's what a dominant person would do, right? Mm -hmm. The risk taker. Um, what energy would you need to be? Excuse me. Ugh, that was gross. <laughs> it's okay, Sorry, guys. I'm a little sicky. <laughs> okay. What energy would you need to become a bottom? Like, what energy would you need to receive from somebody in order, yeah, to be a bottom? Have a bottom girl winter. I can't. I no energy comes to mind i it, i think for me because i am a dom i it's more so familiarity mm -hmm. that gets me comfortable for someone to do that because like <laughs> bitch what no i don't even know you what have you done to earn such a privilege Thanks. and i think that is because i am a dom i'm like you haven't even earned that like what you're at you're literally asking me to go to the bank rob the bank at gunpoint, no mask, no escape car, and walk out with all the bags, just casually walking down the, the street, smoking a joint. That's what you're asking me to do. Wow. And I just fucking met you. That's crazy. Wow. That's crazy. That's what it feels like you're asking me to do. <laughs> so nothing. Nothing. <laughs> okay. I just met you. What? Yeah, I guess that's check, true. Check back in about five years. <laughs> I don't know what I'm looking for in order to <laughs> be put in that position. I guess like... Maybe you're just not in that era right now. Uh, show me that I can be somebody, <laughs> please. God damn. Like, uh, this is great. This is exciting. But also, it's like, maybe I'm doing this as a response to, like, I just have not been getting what I want from people. So I'm like, yeah. I'm just going to fucking take it. You know, like, I, yeah. if I want something, I'm just going to have to go and take it. Like, you know, and I just happen to enjoy it. Yeah. Anyway, last question. Mm -hmm. Can you be a top in the bedroom and something else in the street? So, like, I'm topping these sneakers, but also, like, plan a date. Yeah. Yeah. I think you definitely can. And I think, yeah, I think you definitely can do that because I feel a lot of duality sometimes. It just kind of depends. Sometimes I'm really, like, top all day, every day. And sometimes I'm, like, top when I'm feeling sexy. And then I'm, like, not feeling very sexy or I'm not feeling very, like, wanting to be in control of things and so then that's when i get more like cuddly soft or even just when i get really comfortable yeah if i'm like really comfy walls down i'm like a sweet little baby angel yeah. i'm like wow i'm like a little cat i like to be pet <laughs> like it's actually insane yeah I'm like ooh, don't it, even just like a little mm, i love to be pet so yeah i think yeah, I think you can be either or. Okay, or both simultaneously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, love that. Thank you. Anytime. If this is your first time listening to us, you can follow us on Instagram at allyourpleasures underscore. Mm -hmm. um, like and subscribe to our YouTube. Comment whether you're having a fem top fall. Yes. Or a fem bottom winter i don't know but you <laughs> tell us what you're going to be spending your are you topping our bottoming <laughs> these seasons this coming up <laughs> bitch. this pumpkin season bitch what are you doing are you, you giving the pumpkin or are you taking the pumpkin <laughs> let us know in the comments um join our discord the link is in our description and whether you're listening to this on a monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday bitch we love you bye, bye. Perfect. Lovely. Ugh. Ooh. I always get so sweaty in here. Uh, it's because the thing is an auntie.